Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Chess. In the original, original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, they played some wacky games with some not so wacky consequences. One of those games was a variant of chess called Capsule Monster Chess, aka Capmon. The idea behind the game is that just like in chess, you have a game board, you have a set number of pieces, you can move in unique ways, and in order to defeat your opponent, you must defeat their pieces. And honestly, that is where the chess comparisons end. We see this game mode debut in the anime during Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 0's 11th episode, titled The Rumored Catmon's New Appearance. The episode begins with a character called Warashibe. He gifts a present to one of Yugi's friends, Miho. He does this as he wants to win her heart, since he believes they are fated to be together. And so he sends her a gacha box full of capsule monsters. A nice gesture on the surface. However, it is revealed that this guy is a bit of a creeper. You see, the main reason he wants Miho is because he believes that she is the capsule monster goddess, and he wants to encase her in a capsule to complete his capsule monster collection. No, I'm not making that up. Anyway, he challenges Miho to a Capmon duel. They both take turns drawing random capsules from the Gacha machine to build their opening field. However, Miho's pulls are all revealed to be incredibly bad low levels, while all of Warashibe's are perfect high level pulls. Obviously, shenanigans are afoot, but without any proof, they have to continue the duel. Miho plays to the best of her abilities. However, it doesn't end well. And after she loses her temper and knocks Yugi, it is revealed that the gacha machine was in fact rigged. And so, Yami Yugi takes over and plunges the duel into a penalty game. And this is where things get spicy. Yugi says, we don't need to restart the duel. I'll play with the monsters I have right now with where Miho left all of the monsters as well. And I guarantee you, I'll still beat you. Can Yugi really get out of this dire situation in such a disadvantageous position? Of course he can. Yugi strategically sacrifices all but one of his pieces in order to create a one turn kill by using his Corrigan monster, who despite being a low rank and having terrible close range attack power, has the unique ability to once per duel attack all monsters in a diagonal pattern. And so, with this play, Yami Yugi obliterates Warashibe's monsters and wins the duel. As punishment, Yami Yugi seals him inside of a capsule instead. 12 episodes later, we would get a second and the last ever episode to feature capsule monster chess in this season. This time, it was a duel between Yami Yugi and Mokuba, who yet again cheated in the exact same way as Warashibe. This time, however, Yami Yugi was able to overcome the stacked odds by evolving one of his low level monsters to the max level by getting it to an evolution square. Now, technically, capsule monsters would appear one more time in the Yu Gi Oh! Duel Monsters spin off series. Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters. The physical game, which would be made into a real-world game, could be seen in the first episode. This would become Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters, the collectible figure game. However, despite being released in 2005, production would end after just one booster pack was released. People just did not buy enough of this thing for them to warrant any more production. Which is a shame, because when I go over the rules review of this game, I actually think it's kind of cool and had some avenues to be expanded upon, which have been kind of cool. So without further ado, I would like to invite you all to the true rules of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters collectible figure game rules. Let's go. The game is played on a six by six game board with both sides of the field having a starting area. In the anime, the game board is actually a little bit bigger. It's 8x8. Eight eight. The reason for this is because it closer resembles a chessboard, which is 8x8. Eight eight. In the anime, boards come in a variety of forms. However, in the real world one, we only got one board, which is a shame. Because I think if this game lasted longer, you would have had a whole 
variety of different boards, obstacles, and things like that to plan your attacks around. In the anime, each player randomly pulls five capsules from a gacha machine to build their starting field. While I imagine you could have absolutely done this in the real world as well at like events and stuff, if we're being honest in the real world, all you have to do is just take the capsule monsters that you have, choose five of those, and those are the ones that you play with. Monsters are concealed from the opponent inside capsules until a player reveals them. This is also true in the anime. However, the difference is you know what the monster's levels are, even if they're sealed inside of their capsules. To win the game, you must reduce the opponent's king piece's hit points to zero. In the anime, there are no king pieces. Instead, you have to wipe out their entire field. A capsule monster game can be played with basic or advanced rules. Basic rules are just for like beginners and kids. You make the youngest person get to go first, the older person goes second. You have specific monsters that you give the younger player and you get a specific team as well. So it's all kind of like made to be easier for a younger player to get used to the game. Advanced is just the full rules, which we're going to be doing right now. You begin by choosing a king piece and then assembling your monsters. You cannot have more than seven monsters on your team. However, you can have as many copies of any monster on your team as you like. It's really interesting seeing a game that could have had the potential of taking off but never did. So you can see how unfuture proof it was. But I imagine if this game would have took off, you would have had monsters limited. Because I'm sure something would have been broken. A broken strategy would have been found. You can only have one of this monster now. That monster's banned. I'm sure it would have happened eventually. In fact, keep that in mind throughout the rest of these rules. Some of these rules... I imagine if the game had been allowed to sit for a while, would have been changed. Level two monsters on your team must be the same faction as your king. Note that all capsules are identical, except for the sticker on the fronts with a symbol that identifies the capsule's faction. There are six different factions. Dark, earth, fire, wood, light, thunder, water, and wind. For example, here, Summon Skull. It's a level two, so it would have to meet the faction of the king. While we're showing this card, let's just talk about all the things on the card. We have the name of the monster, the cost of the monster to be summoned, the monster's hit points, aka its health, the monster's damage value, which is how much damage it inflicts, the faction it belongs to, its movement pattern, its movement range, its movement cost, its attack pattern, its attack range, its attack cost, and finally, its special ability. Figures move and attack in one of four patterns, as described on its card. These patterns are plus type. This type can move and attack straight forward, back, left, or right, up to the limit of its movement and attack range. Note, monsters cannot move or attack through opponent's monsters. They have to have a special ability to do that. However, you can move and attack through your monsters. X-Type. This type can move and attack diagonally up to the limit of its movement and attack range. O-Type. This type can move and attack the second space in any direction from the space that it occupies. This attack pattern is unique as it makes the monster capable of leaping over squares. Meaning if there's a monster there, you're just basically jumping over the monster. Whereas other things sort of go through them so they can't go past them. This one jumps over. Star type. Only the king has this type of movement pattern. Basically, they can move one space in any direction. Just like a real king in chess. However, the big difference is kings in capsule monsters can't attack. Some monsters have special abilities. These abilities will override the normal rules of gameplay. At the start of a turn, you get a number of action points listed on your king card. You can spend action points on your turn to do the following. Summon a monster, move a monster that has not yet moved, attack with a monster that has not yet attacked, activate a special ability that has not yet been activated. The monster cards reveal the cost for these actions. You may do as many actions as possible within your action point budget, and you can do them in any order you see fit. Summon a monster, move a monster, attack, or attack, summon a monster, move a monster, then move another monster, then use a special ability. If it's in your budget, just do whatever you want, whenever you want, basically. However, note, it's advisable to use as many action points as you can in your turn, because action points don't carry over 
happens for the next turn. The act of summoning monster is releasing them from their capsule. This is when they properly enter the game. When moving a monster, it must move in accordance with its movement type. How far that monster can move is dependent on its movement range. You can only attack opposing monsters that sit within your monster's attack zone pattern and range. Important to note, the space your monster occupies, that doesn't count as a space to move. So it's the next one. So one rather than one, two. Do you know what I mean? Also, because you can't go through monsters, means you can't put a monster on a zone that an enemy monster or one of your monsters is already occupying. So you have to put it in the space in front to meet its attack range. Or if you've got a decent attack range, you can put it a little bit further away. Monsters cannot block attacks. When attacked, put a number of damage markers equal to the monster's damage value on the attacked card. If the total damage exceeds the monster's hit points, the monster is destroyed and removed from the field. The same applies if the king is attacked. When a monster is destroyed, damage is dealt also to that player's king, equal to the cost of the defeated monster. For example, a defeated summoned skull, the owner of that summoned skull's king, would then take four damage. Monsters still within their capsules can still be attacked. A capsule only has two hit points. But then what happens to the monster inside if the capsule is destroyed? Well, it's destroyed and damage is still dealt to the king as if it was destroyed regularly. When activating a special ability, you pay the ability cost and then follow the rules on the card. For example, let's use Mystical Elf. At the cost of one action point, you can remove one damage counter from each of your monsters within Mystical Elf's attack zone. However, by doing this, she cannot attack this turn. So that's an example of an activatable effect. Some monsters have continuous effects. For example, Blue Eyes White Dragon. It has the continuous effect flying, which means it can fly over opposing monsters that block its path when it moves. Or how about Summon Skull, who upon summon moves instantly two spaces straight ahead. With that, that is the origins and all of the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Figure Game. If you would like to see the rules of two other weird spin-off games, we've got Dungeon Dice Monsters and we've also got Dual Monster Quest. I'll leave links here and some links pinned in the description. But other than that, thank you for watching.